This tutorial is all about combining two concepts that you're already familiar with. That is Newton's laws, or understanding forces and how they impact motion, and vectors, how to represent vector additions and subtractions with arrows, like you did with displacement and velocity problems. Combining these two ideas allows us to apply our knowledge about forces to two-dimensional situations. Let's establish a starting point for this discussion by reminding ourselves how we've been adding forces in one-dimensional problems. In a 1D situation, we might have two forces, Fa equals 5 newtons to the right and Fb equals 3 newtons to the left, for example. Remember that in a 1D situation, all the forces happen along a single line. First, our free body diagram is nice and simple. Fa or 5 newtons to the right and Fb or 3 newtons to the left. Then, F net equals Ma, where F net is the addition of all our forces, in this case, Fa plus Fb. This is a vector addition, and some people would put lines over the forces to remind themselves that this is a vector addition. Since we're considering directions, let's set the right to be positive. Our vector diagram would be nice and simple and show 5 newtons right, and then, tip to tail, 3 newtons left. The resultant vector, or F net, would be from the start of the vector addition to the end of it. In a 1D problem, we can represent vector directions by simply showing the forces as positive or negative. In this case, any forces aimed to the right would be positive, and any forces opposite or to the left would be negative. After that, it's just adding or subtracting. So 5 newtons minus 3 newtons is 2 newtons. The net force is 2 newtons to the right. We can use this to determine the acceleration or whatever we need for the rest of the problem. So let's compare this with a two-dimensional problem. In a 2D situation, we might have two forces again. Fa equals 5 newtons east, and this time Fb equals 3 newtons north. In a 2D situation, the forces are no longer along a single line. We added a second dimension. Our free body diagram is a little bit different. Fa equals 5 newtons right and Fb equals 3 newtons up. Again, F net equals Ma, as is always a good way to start a dynamics problem, where F net is the addition of our forces, Fa plus Fb in this case. We may have to stop again and remember that this is a vector addition. Let's include the little lines. And in a 2D problem like this, we need to represent the direction aspects of the vectors a bit differently, not just positives and negatives, like in a 1D problem. Our vector diagram would show 5 newtons right, and then, tip to tail again, 3 newtons up. As usual, the resultant vector, or F net, would be from the start of the vector addition to the end. We can see that we have a bit more to consider than right and left here. In this case, we need to pull out some trig. It's a right triangle, so Pythagorean theorem or c squared equals a squared plus b squared would do the job to determine the magnitude of the resultant, f net. In order to determine the direction of f net and resulting acceleration, we would use the tan ratio. Let's consider one more 2D problem. This time we'll have Fa equals 5 newtons east again, but Fb equals 3 newtons northeast. Again, in a 2D situation, the forces are not along a single line, and our free body diagram would look like this. Fa, or 5 newtons, pulling to the right, and Fb equals 3 newtons up and right at 45 degrees. Again, F net equals Ma, our stable starting point, and F net, the addition of all of our forces, Fa plus Fb in this situation. It's a vector addition, and our vector diagram would show 5 newtons right, and then, tip to tail, 3 newtons up and right. The resultant vector, 
or Fnet would be from the start of the vector addition to the end, as usual. Taking a look at our vector diagram, we can determine that our angle here is 90 degrees plus another 45 degrees, or a total of 135 degrees. And we can see that this is definitely not a right triangle. Thus, we can't use our standard trig ratios. In a case like this, where our vector diagram doesn't form a right triangle, we need to pull out some new tools. Cosine law and sine law would work well here. The cosine law can be used to determine the magnitude of the resultant, or F net. And the sine law can be used to determine the direction of F net. In this tutorial, we compared three dynamics problems. One where the forces were in one dimension, that is, the forces were along a single line. Then two questions where the forces were in two dimensions. For each question, we started with a good free body diagram, a great way to visualize our situation. Next, we wrote F net equals MA, our starting point for all dynamics problems. The F net for all of them is simply the addition of the force vectors. So we can draw our vector diagrams for the F net. As vectors, we draw them tip to tail, with F net being the resultant starting at the very beginning of the vector addition and finishing at the end. The vector diagrams look quite different, and thus at this point things start to differ a bit. They're all vector additions, but different tools are needed to deal with each. For a 1D problem, the vector directions are fairly simple to deal with, using positives and negatives. If right is positive, then every force pointing to the right is considered positive, and any force pointing left is negative. In 2D problems, we can no longer stick to positives and negatives, as we have another dimension involved. In 2D, if the vectors form a right triangle, we can use our trig ratios to solve for the F net's magnitude and direction. If the vectors don't form a right triangle, then we resort to cosine law and sine law. 